today, um, we're going to be opening up, I don't know if we're going to do all these Felix or uh, Lindberghs, but we're going to open up these, uh, these Lindberghs and take a look at them. Uh, these just came in on the container. Um, just do a little look over them. I think I did, I did one of the other Lindberghs on a previous container, but um, I kind of wanted to get a look at these um, this time around and go over them since we're going to be sending these out to customers soon. Um, so I'm just going to start with this one over here and kind of talk while we're going. Um, most of these I think are going to end up being running um, like a ring edge 2 or something like that. So I've got a ring edge here, two, here. we're going to test it out. Um, if I happen to have Naomi power cables, I'm going to actually throw a Naomi in one of these as well and test that out. Um, because I'm pretty sure all of these have the power supply. Um, oh, that's right. I also brought a, um, a step-down converter, and I'll show you which one it is. It's uh, what I use with all my cabs, and you need them specifically with Lindbergh's because they, um, the, the power supply uh, needs 100 volt. Um, now, you only need that power supply if you're going to run Lindbergh or uh, Naomi. Otherwise, if you're running Ring Edge 2, the Ring Edge 2 can provide the same cabinet power off of it, and you don't need the power supply. So I'm going to just throw this panel straight on. I'm not even going to bolt it in right now. We'll just put it on for the time being. Um, let's see here. I might need to open that first. Let me find... Stick my finger in here and grab the latch, and you can open this up. Normally, the lock on the control panel, which I believe these didn't have locks on them originally, I'm gonna have, I'll be replacing those. Oh no, the lock's here. Anyway, um, normally the latch from the lock would hit it and open it up. Okay, let me slide this on. And I'll hook this up a little bit later. But, um, so the one thing that I really want to check with these cabinets, especially with like Lindbergh's, they um, they kind of their their monitors look pretty bad when they go bad. They're fine when they're not, but um, if you look at this one, like you can see right here, all this this discoloration that's actually just dust underneath the monitor. Um, but we'll see how the monitor itself looks when we power it up. Open up the bottom here. So this one has the power supply, but it looks like it doesn't have any of the other wiring to go with it. Um, so the power supply is there. We may come back and test it. I think I have some spare cables somewhere. Uh, but just real quick, I'm going to power this one up. We're going to take a look at the monitor and see how it is. And I think you'll be able to tell even with nothing on it. Actually, this one seems to look okay. But um, we'll probably unwrap all three of these. We'll put them all together and, uh, and kind of do a little test over each one with the monitor. So we'll be right back in just a sec. All right, everybody, we're back. That was a little longer than I expected to um, get this set up, but um, we had some little hiccups because I don't have a VGA to DVI adapter on me. Um, and I did a little bit of weird rigging to get everything working. Anyway, we got it up. You can, I've got a game running here, and uh, you can kind of take a look at and see, you know, like this part being really foggy and over here, um, and a little over here. And um, hopefully this will come up with a white screen in a second. You can see um, just how burned this monitor is. And specifically, now, I don't think I've ever mentioned this too much in any of our videos, but um, with LCD monitors, they are also able to um, have some sort of burn damage from, from heat in this case. Uh, where CRTs, you know, you've got, you've got like the image is kind of burned into the, the screen itself. With these, they have um, a couple protective layers on the front, and when those get hot, they turn yellow. So um, at some point, whenever this goes back to a white screen, I'll point it out, and you'll see that this one is pretty badly burned, but 
my main concern with getting these and you know making sure that these monitors are actually ex kind of acceptable is I don't see any weird noise going on, any lines, anything like that. This actually looks pretty good for an original monitor. Um, the big thing that you have to do that is, is you still have to take it all the way apart to get in and clean this dust out. So um, that's kind of the hard part. At any rate, let's take a look at the inside of the cab and whatnot. I haven't bolted this panel on, but um, if you did, there would be a couple bolts down here um, and a couple bolts on the side underneath. Um, this connector here is similar to other Sega cabs, uh, just a little different with this. I don't remember exactly the pinouts, but um, just a quick look inside. You've got the uh, JVSIO in there. Um, and inside the cab, I think we looked at this a little bit earlier, but um, this power supply, for some reason, I tried plugging in. Uh, so this is the this is the harness that powers the cab. And let's take a look at the ring edge really quick here. Um, it actually has a connector here to power the cabinet. So it's actually more convenient just to use um, the ring edge to power your Lindbergh. Um, and I, I, I want to say they designed it that way for a reason. Anyway, this harness would normally plug into this power supply. Um, and I actually think it doesn't need a step down. Normally, if you look inside, I don't know if you can see the, um, the LED in there. That LED might be um, kind of like blinking, like bam, bam, bam. Um, and that's a sign that it, you know, it needs to be on a step down. It wasn't doing that. And I did hook it up to a step down anyway, but it, this connector didn't seem to power the cab. So maybe there's something wrong with these power supplies. I'm not sure. Um, at any rate, we bypassed it so that we could get the cab powered. Um, if you didn't do that, you wouldn't have any uh, lights up here, which I believe these, these look like they're not coming on anyway. Um, I believe there's a bulb in here, which also isn't on, and um, the I.O. would also not power. So let's come around the back real quick. And like I said, I didn't have a VGA to DVI adapter. So I just unplugged the VGA from the cab and I plugged in a VGA to DVI cable, which I took out of the Project Diva. I happen to have a spare of that. So we were able to get video in that way. Um, so now let's come around and um, while we're at it, we'll take a look at this uh, step down that we've got here. This is the one that I get. You can get it off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Um, and I usually get like a thousand watt because I don't need, I'm not gonna be running maybe 10 or 20 cabs. Um, now it's generally recommended, people recommend if you've got candy cabs, you should put it on a step down anyway because uh, they're supposed to be getting 100 volt, not 120. Now it'll work for the most part on 120, but, um, but in general you'd wanna be on, on 100. So like my Egret 2, uh, the power supplies in these, I believe the power supplies in, um, what was the other one, the SQs that we had, those, uh, I think it says those sun power supplies will need a step down to run. So anyway, this is the one I get, and again, I'll put a link down below, and it has, um, you can get, I think, 500 watt, 100 watt, 1,000 watt, 2,000 watt. Um, there's a couple different ones that you can get. Um, and then here's the step down itself. Um, you can see you've got 100, or 100 volt coming out and 120. And on the front side, you can switch between step down and step up. So that's that, and um, let's come around the front and see if we've got a white screen. We can probably put it up back onto a white screen in a sec here anyway. Uh, actually, let's just go into um, test menu. Um, I don't know if this, this doesn't have a, I think this one doesn't have a subsystem test. Anyway, so actually you can, so well, let's, uh, let me go back and, I know what, easy way, I'll just, Turn it off and on. Actually, no, you can kind of see right here. If you look on this, you see, um, like, this is not white. I don't know if, let me see the video. Yeah, it's not, it's it's yellower than it looks in the video. Um, but um, you can kind of see, you know, where there is that little bit of burn. But then when you start up the game, it really doesn't look that bad. Um, so I, I really like the way this monitor looks, and um, I think we'll be okay with this. Um, I think that's really all I have to say about this cabinet. We're going to check the other two. I'm probably not going to do do it on video. I'll take pictures and send it out to people and see if um, 
they're okay with it. I do, um, well, to say I offer swapping monitors, I don't like doing it, but I can do it. So if, if any of these monitors end up being like really bad, um, I can give that option to do it. Um, but at any rate, that's that for the Vuelix. Um, I believe our next video, we're gonna look at some of the um, Vuelixes that we got. Did I say Vuelix? Yeah, no. These, that's it for the Lindberghs. We're gonna take a look at the Vuelixes next time. Um, and I'll kind of take a look at uh, how those come in because some of those were in really rough condition and I really wanted to, to do them once over. So we'll see you in that next video.